Are you ready for your window shoppers to become paying customers? Equity Commerce is here to make that happen. We can help you automatically show the exact product visitors saw but didn't purchase on your site wherever they go on Facebook and Instagram using this magic called dynamic Facebook retargeting. To show these ads to your prospects today, sign up in your Equid Control Panel in the Marketing section and look for the Facebook Remarketing app. This is fully integrated into Equid and Facebook and so simple and effective you'll wonder why you hadn't done this sooner. To help you decide, if you sign up now and spend $50 by February 15th, you receive a free $100 advertising credit from our friends at Facebook. Okay, back to the show. This is the Equid E-Commerce Show with your host, Jesse Ness, along with Richard Ote. Richie, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Game on. Here we go again. Yeah, podcast day. All right, so let's set a little context here for the listeners. Uh, I think this is going to be an awesome show, uh, but I do want to I want to let people know, hey, if you're expecting a tip that you can apply today and have be making more money on Monday, this probably isn't it. This is going to be a little more of the dreaming, uh, you know, sit back, relax, have a cocktail, uh, because we're going to talk a lot of, about where e-commerce is headed in the next few years uh, and even beyond. Uh, so... So anyway, we're going to be talking voice, AR, VR, video, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, Rich, I know you're smiling because you, uh, you like to dream about the future here. Oh, so. yeah, especially voice. That's what made me smile right there. I mean, you, you heard it on the prediction a couple episodes back. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take till that comes in, but uh, I think the biggest part when it comes to voice is people don't know what to say yet to the voice, right? Yep. You know, that it's like parlor tricks. What's the weather set the timer, all that stuff. But, uh, I know it's around the corner and I look forward to it. It's where our brains work, you know? So I, I'm excited about today's guest. All right. Well, with that, let's bring on our guest. This is Brandon Schultz. Brandon, how are you? Doing great guys. How are you? Excellent. So you're the, are you the founder of violet.io? Yes. Co-founder and CEO of violet. Awesome. So give us a little background on uh, where, you know, what brought you into the e-commerce world where to, you know, to get to where you are now. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, kind of got my start back in the day, actually building um, different types of apps, whether it be in uh, the social networking space um, and then got into e-commerce um, on the digital side, again, building apps uh, back in about like 2012, 2013. Um, and at the time we were trying to solve a very specific question around um, how to facilitate um, different types of e-commerce in a social network. Um, and through that process have built startups, raised money, um, actually then joined a couple other consulting firms, um, consulted for you know a fair portion of uh, some of the Fortune 100 retailers, and kind of got to the point where I realized that there was you know just something missing for a certain segment of the market and said, I think I might be uh, the right kind of person to go in and serve that market as best as I can. All right. So we're doing the real entrepreneurial journey here. So you're, you're creating something completely from scratch that's going to change the world, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> the that's e-commerce exactly world. It. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, so do you want to start off with telling our listeners about the company? Is that where, where we, you'd like to start today? Yeah, I think that's good. I think we should. Uh, there's been a lot of ado here about the future of e-commerce and a lot of stuff. Um, but we built just some fantastic technology that, at the end of the day, helps people who are selling things online to get more and easier distribution. Um, one of the things that, that exists out there is that, um, as you guys know, and one of the reasons we're such big fans of Equid, is it's one thing to kind of pick your product and choose to get your product up on a website somewhere. Um, it's a very different thing to get to $10,000 a month or to hit a million dollars in yearly revenue. And one of those big humps to get over is distribution. Um, and we saw that market and we said, we think there's kind of an untapped resource here that fits really, really well. And that's what led us to actually start this company and kind of how we view things. So the problem we solve is distribution, but we do it differently. We do it through technology first. So for folks that maybe um, aren't uh, developers, coders, or engineers, um, I'll maybe explain a little bit of, of what that means. But this all actually started based upon kind of who my co-founder and I are. Um, we are uh, guys that love innovation. And as any good entrepreneur does, they start essentially by first and foremost, picking their passion, right? Because at the end of the day, what you do every single day has to be something that you love. Otherwise, you're going to 
either choose to do something else or you're not going to do it that well. And we love technology. We love building products. And we realized that guys in our seat, guys that know how to build products, really don't have a lot of options. Um, for, in, for the most part, we would have to try to build either another social media app and who needs another social media app? <laughs> not me. Um, or you have to build some sort of media network because in large part, what funds these different models on the internet is eyeballs and then you monetize those eyeballs. And so for guys like us, our options were pretty limited. And we then started to ask the question and say, well, but w w wait a second, like how come a developer can't start an e-commerce business? Like what would that take? And that's really hard. Like it's really hard for someone to start an e-commerce business from scratch, all kinds of obstacles in the way. And so that's actually where we started first and foremost. And we said, let's figure out how we help developers who is really our customer, right? We, we kind of started with what who we were and what our passion was. And we, we realized that what we liked and what we wanted actually meant that there were a lot of other people like us and that helped to define who our customer was. And from there we said, okay, we're going to be dedicated. We're going to commit to these developers. We're going to build stuff for them. And so what, what they essentially get is what's called uh, an API or an application programming interface. Um, you guys have probably seen that on the internet somewhere. You've probably heard about it. Um, it's very different to understand what that fully means. Um, but in large part, the internet gave machines and computers the ability to talk to each other without being in the same room and connected uh, via the same wire as it was traditionally placed. You could now have machines spread around the world and they were all able to communicate, which is great. But you then have a series of applications and you can think about it as like, you know, big databases or like vaults of data that exist in different places. And one of the ways in which those applications are able to talk to each other is through a common language or agreed upon exchange. And that's what an application programming interface is. It's an agreed upon exchange between different entities that lets uh, different types of data flow back and forth through different applications. It's, it sounds simple, but without that layer of trust, uh, we would not be able to do what the internet does today. It's, it is, for lack of a better term, internet speak. Um, and that's how apps work. And so we said, okay. Yep. And for all, I'll help, uh, I'll help the people that are like, what's an API? Um, yeah. you know, like in the, in the equid world, in the e-commerce world, it's, you're already using it. So it's when your customers are ready to check out and they, you need to pull shipping rates. There's an API that talks to UPS or DHL and pulls the rates in. And there's a, uh, an API that, uh, talks to the payment processors to verify payment and things. So APIs are working all underneath your current, uh, e-commerce stores. Yeah. And to stack on that, it's to, to, to your point here, Jesse is, the most merchants don't ever have to worry about that. Yeah. This, you're specifically yeah. talking about these APIs are now the developer. They don't go start an Equid. They can start something on their own that, and that connects a video game to Equid that wants to sell something in the video game or whatever. The merchants aren't having to think anything about this. This is the developers that are using this to talk to these applications and software. Yep. Correct. Exactly Perfect. it. Also, so, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. You guys are good. So, so that's that's kind of where we started and, and what we built. And what we have uh, today, which I think is pretty interesting, is a single API for any developer that wants to create an app that sells products. Right. If if you're a developer out there, um, and there are more people than ever learning how to code, and so you have essentially just a different type of entrepreneur. You have someone who wants to build a business. Um, they're probably intrigued about e-commerce, but the one thing they don't have is products. And this is why we actually love talking with you guys at Equid is because you guys are so committed to the people out there that sell products. And you want to help get people on the internet as quickly as possible to sell those products with fantastic tools. And um, I'm not paid to say this, but I love working with you guys as a, a developer. Um, and so that's exciting for us because we now get to think about empowering a whole army of individuals out there who are going to start businesses, who are going to um, help serve shoppers every single day and all they need is products. And I imagine you might be listening to this today and you sell products and you think to yourself, man, you know, it'd be really great if I could get my product in front of this kind of an audience or this person. And um, maybe that doesn't always fit into a search field. Like that's often not the only way people interact with the internet. And that's exactly the problem that we, we aim to solve. That's awesome. So as a, as a merchant myself, 
I love it when other people sell my products and I don't have to do much for it. So, you know, please, <laughs> please help. And I think I also want to put a little more context to the word developers. So a lot of people listening that are e-commerce store owners or merchants might be thinking the developer is their web developer that helps them build their site. And I know you're talking about developers as probably a, a higher level, a more expansive view of developers, maybe more like they are um, founders of new companies, new apps beyond just a traditional website with a, uh, a you know, with a yep. store on it. Right. Well, and, Correct. and also they, their real passion to your point, they might really just want to code and they, that's yeah. what they love doing. And I mean, I, we had, a, I had an old friend. I'm like, so what do you do when we well, still a friend? Um, but it was a long time ago. I asked him this, what do you like to do when you're done coding at the end of code? So like, yeah, I know, but with the end, like it, it, you, you did happy hour, you're home, like you code, code, you know, everything could just code, code, code. So this person, they might not even want to talk to customers, do fulfillment, do any of that stuff. But as entrepreneurs, we don't mind that, especially if someone's selling our products for us. That's exactly it. That's it. That, that guy that said code, code, code. <laughs> That's my customer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah. And maybe we don't want to talk to them. So <laughs> we talk to them via an API, which is their language. So <laughs> yeah. even better. And that, and that API is also commonly referred to as Violet. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Yes. Yes. So that's, um, that's a really good description, guys. Thank you for, for kind of uh, illuminating on that. I think one of the things that we attempt to do um, based upon this, as again, any entrepreneur would do, is to really focus on the value in in the chain here. And for us, the value that we're able to provide to these developers, you could call them channels, you could call them kind of number of different things, but um, the value for these guys is we want to, of course, not only open up a new type of business model for them, which we do, they can now create an e-commerce app, which they never would have been able to do before. Um, but one of the unique things here is if you're a merchant, you might sell your product for say $20, right? And $20 is a good price point. But traditionally, you don't have a lot of extra space in your margin to go and play in different types of CPC and CPM markets. But what you do have is a percent of margin. And with that, we allow merchants to say, for anyone out there who can generate a sale for me, I will give 20%, 30%, whatever you have in your economics, you can set that rate through the Violet uh, platform. You, you don't have to know any code. You don't have to go in and uh, hire someone to do anything for you. It's uh, basically just a button that you hit and you can set your rate. And so for the folks out there that are building applications and solving these e-commerce e problems um, today and in the future, that guy will now get paid for all the hard work that he's done to find a customer, get them to look at your product, to then convert that into a transaction. And if that transaction happens, then he gets paid. And he gets compensated for the work that he's done. It's a very, very efficient type of a market. And we want to, of course, put the tools in the hands of merchants that are on Equid, for example, to play with that and determine what is the best margin that we're comfortable with and how do we incentivize different people to do that hard work and to go and find those new customers for me. Um, so that's one of the things that we think is really interesting that when we really focus on the value of our customers, um, we can also provide new value to uh Equit's customers. And that's been really, really fun for us. Got it. So uh, again, more of a context setting. So 20% is really, I mean, that's sort of almost a standard rate for affiliates. It's about what you pay Amazon when they sell your products. So it's really not, you're not asking for, I would say much more than other people would ask for, for a similar type of service. Like the, I'm going to sell your stuff you give me 20% or maybe there's a sliding scale there a little bit, but that's, that's pretty standard numbers. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I would actually maybe even say it differently. Uh, we don't ask for anything on that number. Okay. That number is chosen by, uh, by the seller. So y you can choose to put it at five if you want, or you can put it at 50. Okay. Well, what we do is we allow these things to exist within a market. And so if you have the margin and you want to continue to incentivize and begin to optimize these things, you can turn it up as high or as low as you like. We think that's great. Um, our business model, which is just slightly different, is uh, basically just on a small transaction fee. We, we only take like a couple points at the bottom, but we're not in there to try and elbow our way in and take as much revenue as possible and squeeze people out, and maximize our margins. That's, that's not our business. And quite frankly, that's just not who we are. And so 
what we want to do is let the market be the market. Okay. Developers are working hard. If they can get paid a good cut of the transaction, they'll take it. And the merchants are doing the same thing. If they can figure out how to maximize um, the amount that they're able to give to someone else, they should also do that. But we're not going to set it. We're not going to try and interfere. We'll, we'll, we'll let that work itself out. Well, especially if these developers can get them in front of a set of eyeballs or earbuds that no other market's going to get them in front of. Like, There's a lot of competition to get to mm-hmm. page one of Google. There's a lot of competition to yep. get to, you know, two, three, four pages down on Amazon, right? But if you could, you know, get into a video game and you have a unique energy drink, you know, that would cost you a lot of money to get in Vons or some mm-hmm. sort of store. Good luck competing with those big beverage companies. But yeah. there could be yeah. some really unique use cases here. Yeah, I'm curious. As you guys have kind of had the chance to think about this a little bit, what, what use, use cases come to mind for you? Yeah, I was going to get into that because I think that right now we're talking APIs and markets and such. But like, yeah. as you're as people are listening, like I don't, I don't really understand what you're talking about. So, yeah. you know, maybe an example. And I am looking at your website, so I have the advantage of of looking at it. But you had sure. some examples here of of what is possible, I believe. And mm-hmm. you know, so our customers are uh, Equid listeners and people in e-commerce are very familiar with say what's going on with social, where you can tag posts and, and take products and, and buy. So it basically uh, enables social. But I think what you enable is that if people are creating a new app like in the video world, that a video can become shoppable, right? Like, I, yeah, I like think the over the top video or yeah. video or voice would be the two Jesse and I would love to cover the most. Yeah. Well, Rich, what would be your example for, I know you're a voice voice guy. So what would be, <laughs> you know, like what's the, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, phew, I, I'm trying to think of how to ask the question and not go too deep. But right now, kind of like to my comment earlier, most voice applications, people are, you, you ask and there's not enough data or they don't know how to ask the question right. So Siri or Alexa or Google, in my opinion, seems to be the best because they actually have a database to pull from, right? You can, hey, how can I be happy, you know, making something up? And it can be like, according to this or according to this, and it can pull from its big database. Whereas you, you ask that to Siri, it's like, hmm, I don't know. Or So it's, I would love either video or voice things that you would see potentially could be out there or, yeah. or just something you see is a good use case now or any way you want to carry it on either of those two. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I stare at this every day, right? So I feel like I see really, really interesting things that both are in the works and things that will happen uh, maybe in the, in the long term as well. Um, but if we, if, we, if we drill in on video for a second, imagine um, like a vine with shopping, right? 15 second videos where someone can talk about a product, they can talk about their life, whatever it is, but there are now either tags or some other type of gesture where the product pops in and that developer is able to to pull in that product from someone on Equid and someone can buy natively without ever leaving that app. Okay. What you now have is a qualified audience, right? Someone who's been able to curate, excuse me, curate their audience. They can now sell on your behalf. They're generating eyeballs. And that is a highly, highly engaged audience that's willing to purchase. Um, and if we can kind of compress that conversion funnel that where they can purchase at the, at that point, I think that's great. Awesome. I noticed, um, so I did have a, I had actually mentioned this to Rich the other day about, so I, I saw you had VR on here the, as well. Yep. And I had, my vision was, I was actually playing over the holidays a, a VR fishing game where the little, whatever, the handheld thing there was the, the fishing pole and you'd cast and then you're, you're catching fish. And it was really, it was a lot of fun and it was, I wasn't getting bit by mosquitoes or anything. And, and I was like, well, what if, what if somebody could buy the fish from this, from this game right now? So I was thinking like, you know, is that a possible use case? Like, is it, what are the possibilities for, you know, this application? Yeah, that's, that's where we start to look towards the future. So 100%, you could be in a virtual reality experience and, um, a, a product would now surface and you'd have the chance to purchase that product. And who knows, maybe it's actually not fish you want to buy, but bug spray, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're out on the boat and you need some bug spray. And again, that developer realized, 
um, that's a good type of product to pair with that experience. Like that's what he was then focused on doing. Um, now it's interesting because if, if you think about VR for a second, um, and, and this is where we're sort of really focused on that value for, for our customers. Um, but, but if you're building that app and someone's looking at an experience in virtual reality and there's then a chance to purchase a product, say it's like recognizable and maybe you, that there's like a voice command or some sort of like hand gesture, when it comes time for them to, to like buy that product, what, what are you going to do? Like pop open a browser window and like put that in front of the screen and have them type in their name and address and all that stuff. Like, no, that's, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. We, we actually need a totally different set of tools for these people to facilitate that process. And so that's why when I talk about APIs and all these other things, those are the tools that these guys need on top of a whole bunch of other things um, to help make that happen. And so you have, that fishing example, you can think about concerts um, where you're watching a concert in virtual reality and then you can buy merch that goes with that or other types of things. But virtual virtual reality and augmented reality, both of those we think are actually going to be really, really uh, interesting in, in large spaces for us. Yeah, I could see that because, yeah, I, I in VR or AR, you're not necessarily using your hands. You're not using a keyboard. So entering a credit card or entering address would be really hard. Real, I, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm sure there's a way, but you know, could you potentially say, uh, "All right, you, you, okay, you, the con- actually a concert, a VR concert makes a lot of sense." Where mm-hmm. the obvious is like, "All right, you want to buy this T-shirt?" Or like, the, the lead singer's got whatever kind of shoes on. Uh, blink with your yep. left eye five times to buy now or something <laughs> like. You know, exactly. I, I, I don't know how you make that purchase happen, but yeah. that's where the developers are coming into play. Yeah, that's exactly it. And those are the kinds of things that we're thinking through and working with other folks on. Everything from your point to like, how does the interface work? Like, do I have to like draw a circle with my hand and then like push it or something? And mm-hmm. um, I'm like being serious here on, on different types of options. Um, we think that's really interesting. And then even back to the voice example, right? Um, imagine if someone were to just create a, a simple deal of the day app, right? Where uh, a product that's been discounted by call it five or ten percent, they they would determine what their algorithm is. And someone wakes up in the morning and says, "What's the deal today?" And they tell them what the deal is, and they get a, a, the option to buy or not buy the product. But all they have to say is yes or no. And now you have a really interesting e-commerce business powered by voice. There's no screens. Uh, they can do that on their commute or whatever they want to do. Um, we think that's interesting, but it, it allows these developers quote unquote to try solve some of the problems that you mentioned rich around like what do people say and like what is the what does the purchase motion look like um because it it really is not solved today in voice oh yeah i mean and so like a hybrid of what voice would be like say someone's listening to this podcast right now and you want to we're talking about it well not this podcast because it's not a product but um we have a particular product we're talking about. Maybe it's a health. Uh, you you got the health best drink. Uh, vitamin power. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and then you mention it and it's like, hey, so if you're into it, just say buy it now, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Something like that yeah. would just be unreal because we know how many steps like they could be driving in the car. They could be. What are they going to do? Remember that? Like you're probably too young. Like back in the day when we were listening to radio, it was like. Oh crap! They said the phone number. There was no rewind the radio mm-hmm. to get the phone number. Like that's why everyone had to turn them into jingles so you'd remember the number. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly the point. And and to kind of pull that through in the full concept, right? It's the idea of not just doing advertising, but allowing the the interaction with the product to result in an actual conversion, right? Because there's all kinds of advertising in podcasts. To your point. But you then have to remember it or like write it down or come back later. Like the, there's no action to be taken in the moment, especially in that medium. Yeah. Um, and that gets really interesting if you could hear an ad about um, the, a pair of Allbirds shoes, for example, or maybe someone else's shoes. You hear the ad and through your voice assistant, you say, add to cart. And it rewinds 30 seconds, listens through, figures out what that product was and adds it to your cart. And boom, you now literally are shopping while listening. Yeah, or you're a financial services company and you're talking about finances and they say the phone number and you say, call them. And Correct. Now, and all of a sudden, it just maybe it doesn't make a conversion, but it rewinds and it dials that number for you. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, and I think with voice, so if you're, so if there's a developer out there making a voice app, like you're clearly competing against Amazon and they have all the products. So what Violet would potentially enable is, all right, I'm making a voice app and I, I, I don't want to play with Amazon because they're going to crush me. So, but I still want to sell stuff. So that, that person could work with you and say, all right, I want access to all your products. Um, there's like, Product feeds coming in from all sorts of merchants. I'm going to pick them, and I'm going to build the I'm going to build the Amazon killer potentially. Yeah, and I I, I wouldn't even call it an Amazon killer, right? Like, yeah. if, we, if we just look, if we look at some of the larger trajectory of the e-commerce for a second, I mean, e-commerce is growing 15 percent year over year or more, yep. and it's almost at 500 billion dollars. If that con- continues at the same rate over the next 10 years, we're going to have another 500 billion dollars to play with. Yep. It's a lot of money. So Amazon's not going anywhere, but Amazon does what they do within the market, which we think is fantastic. What we care about is all the guys that will never have a shop. They'll never have a chance to even get their hat in the ring. Those guys need products. They need tools. And those are the people that we're trying to help empower to build their business. So they they, they aren't necessarily going to build an Amazon killer. I don't know if there is going to be an Amazon killer. Yeah, that might have been a little that was, that was a little overreach there. I'll, I'll take sure, that Sure, sure. No, but... <laughs> But I think it's worth thinking about, right? Even for you know, for folks listening out there today, again, that's how much more these transactions are going to shift to the internet. That's why we care so much about companies like Equid that are helping folks get online to sell their products. Because this, this thing's happening. This wave is going this direction no matter what happens. And so the people that choose to participate in it will get a share of that revenue. And those that don't are going to miss out on that revenue. That's like, that's just how it works. And so... Our mission, as we talked about, is to sort of focus, of course, on those developers, but not just that. Um, we're huge on um, specialization. Um, we as a company, we, we always talk about the two, the two words, uh, partner up. As often as you can, partner up with someone else that does does something much better than you do. Um, and Equid does a lot of things better than we do. <laughs> but we get the chance to work with you guys because it feels in some ways almost like a relay, in, in, to be totally honest, where... Um, there's an entrepreneur sitting at home listening to this podcast and either you're selling products today or you're about to come up with the next really, really great product. You need to find a way to get that thing on the internet. You're going to work super hard. You're going to pick your right platform. And you're going to, in some ways, sign up with Equid. You then hand the baton to Equid and Equid does everything that they do really, really well and kind of runs the second part of that relay. From there, we then grab the baton from Equid because of their commitment to people like us and how they care about the developer community and, and where the internet is going. We then grab that baton and we take it our distance to the final leg and I hand it off to a different developer and I let him do what he does best. And he then takes it and puts it at the feet of the shopper and creates a beautiful kind of surprising and delightful experience and then it creates a transaction. And that for us is essentially the new value chain for how we think e-commerce should work. Um, And it is inextricably tied to uh, partnerships, uh, tied to collaboration and specialization. And we're really, I say, deeply committed to that. Yeah, I mean, you said so many things there. I could talk, go like five different directions, but I'm going to like totally agree with you. People should even, they should partner with Amazon. I mean, if you've got an Equid store, you should have an Amazon store too. Like as much distribution yeah. as you can get, great. Yes. Um, but just keep in mind also to your point there, um, a little bit of this is people who don't have chant, a chance or the money to kind of rank in the same way, but you have to focus on what you can do that Amazon can't do. They can't be human like you can be human. They can't be your brand like you can be your brand. If you're trying to sell the same product as other people are selling on Amazon, good luck. It's a race to the bottom. It's commodity based selling and you're, you're not, it's just a race to the end, right? But, um, but a brand is really the only thing that where you can control a margin. Because if you do a unique product in a unique way and deliver an experience that no one else can deliver, you, you can, I won't say priceless because there's a price on some things, but it, it's close to priceless as you can get. Yep. Spot on. Yeah. Totally I think, yeah, I think, um, I, I was kind of to mirror that thought is yeah. With, so for people listening, if you're on Equid, if you're on other platforms, so your platform is going to provide the the website and you can sell on the web and you can connect to advertising. You can connect to Amazon. You can be on Facebook and Instagram, 
but that's why at Equid we we have an app market. That's why we that's why we partner as well because there are people working on AR and VR and uh, voice and and things like that. And you know, we, once you build a store and you work with other partners, you now have access to that through Violet. So I think it's an awesome way to extend. And you know, as a merchant, you're probably not thinking, "What is what am I doing for VR?" Probably not doing that much, right? <laughs> like, you know, like you're, you're not doing anything for VR. But maybe you could uh, say, "I'm going to download Violet app and and let." you know, connect and maybe somebody's working on the perfect VR, um, mm-hmm. you know, project that, that they want to sell my product on it. Right. And that's, that's basically what you're talking about here. Yeah, that's exactly it. And to kind of use your language, um, we hope that, that you're not trying to think about what you're doing in VR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually the whole, that's the whole purpose of, of the company. Um, but I, but to, to maybe drill in there for, for just one second, um, I'm sure the question pops up. Well, okay, cool. So maybe I do want to think through this distribution thing through Violet. And what does that actually look like? Like, how do I use this thing? And uh, you know, how much does it cost? What, what's all entailed? And um, we want to make this as easy and as frictionless as possible for for merchants out there that uh, that are on Equid. And all it really is is, of course, going first to the Equid app marketplace, which is awesome. Um, and once there, you guys can, of course, just download the app. Um, connected to your store. And I think there's only like two more steps, but all in, it probably takes you about five minutes total. Okay. Um, at the end of those five minutes, you're able to set your rate and uh, flip a switch. And that switch uh, is it basically just says enabled. And once it's enabled, that means that armies of developers can start grabbing that product and building new experiences to sell your products. That's it. it takes five minutes, costs zero dollars. And you have total control over uh, the pricing and what it'll cost you in your business. And so, uh, yeah, it, you're not having to go build an VR app or even think about it. But it uh, it's very much kind of a set it and forget it model, uh, at, le- at least for today. Awesome. So, everybody, there's your call to action. Go to the app market. Connect with Violet. You don't have to do anything right away. There's, you know, and probably nothing's going to happen over the weekend. Like this is this is a long play. So if yeah. you're you're thinking for the future, there's a bunch of developers out there that are working on projects that may need your products. But if you're not connected to Violet, you're not, you're not even in on their radar. Like there, somebody else will be. So, um, you know, this is, this is a long play and, and think about, um, it, it's a very easy thing. You don't, it's, it's free, you connect and potentially somebody's going out there is going to make the perfect app for you, depending on your product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I love it. Uh, the, especially even just the way you worded there, Jess, it's almost like springs come in, you're going to go plant like you have no chance of flowers coming in your backyard if you don't plant some seeds. But just connecting that app is literally your seed planting that maybe one developer in six months does something maybe over like and who knows. But over time, there's if you didn't at least do that piece, you're going to get access to none of this. But if, if you do that piece, you don't have to even think about it. And then you eventually could have more money coming in literally to your point, uh, Brandon of set it and forget it. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's That's awesome. awesome. So yeah, I mean, I think it's it to me and I mentioned this before, it's basically like a product feed. So people are essentially given a product feed and I know it's not exactly like that, but, uh, you're sending a product feed that can now be accessed by other people. So, that's that's the first step, everybody. It's a nice, um, you know, you don't have to, you can dream, but there is a nice, easy, easy takeaway from this. So Yeah, and you got people working to potentially build your business that you don't even have to communicate with and or pay out of your pocket until a sale takes place. Yep, and, and I might add just as a, a quick kind of uh, comment here near the end, because we, we didn't talk about this part, but um, we often get the question, what happens after the transaction takes place? Right. Someone out there bought the product in, in one of these cool apps. That's great. But what's next? To your point on, on the product feed piece, product feeds are great. But for this to really be truly set it and forget it, when that transaction happens, it has to get back into Equid and needs to look exactly like an order that came through the website. Okay. Because, okay. because fulfillment matters, right? We can't have separate fulfillment systems. It all needs to still be this system of record, right? Again, this is us being dedicated to our partnership with Equid and what you guys do so well. And it's that system. And so we help facilitate that back in. And so if there is a transaction, it'll just show up in your admin. 
you'll be able to log in and you'll see and even probably get a notification if you have some of that set up. You'll know that the order has been placed and you can just do the exact same thing you do as if it were a purchase on your website. And, and that part's really fun. Got it. So the order just pops into your control panel. So, um, and you get your notifications like you normally would. Um, and Brandon, now what about, what about actual payment? So, um, now we'll get a little technical here, I guess, but sure. where, yeah. who, who processes the payment? Yeah, we actually use Stripe. We're, we're huge fans of Stripe. They're, uh, kind of a very similar business model to us, um, mm-hmm. just in a different, in a different industry. Okay. Um, so it's all through Stripe, all totally secure. Uh, we of course do have to ask for like bank account, for example, um, but we, we do not touch that. We don't save it. We don't see it. Um, that all goes through Stripe. Um, and then those payment terms, um, basically the, the money is available for you with the, uh, the fact that we, of course, have to be able to facilitate uh, a return or, or an exchange. Um, so there's a 30-day rolling basis on those funds because yep. um, shoppers need that. And, of course, you want shoppers to have the chance to return a product because uh, that's a big, big deal for them. Yep. Um, so we accommodate that, but um, you have access to those funds, and, and we, we do all the split. There's no additional accounting. Uh, we take care of everything. Got it. So it's it's Violet Stripe account. So you guys are in a way the the merchant of record for again getting a little technical, and then yep. you send over a completed sale, and the funding flow, flows or follows, I guess. Um, and then yep. okay, got it. So good uh, question. All right. So for the for payment processing nerds out there, I answered your question. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> so um, well. Awesome. I mean, I got a lot of different ideas and maybe I want to become a VR developer now. Um, but I might be, I, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> my time might have passed for that, but, uh, awesome. Uh, Rich, any last questions here? Oh man, I would just say, um, I'd pretty much just reiterate your, or ask you, you're saying people should just go to the app store, attach Violet and wait. Correct. Yeah, that, that's step number one. Just get it started. Um, yeah. There's going to be a whole bunch of new things that we're testing right now and kind of optimizing that are going to roll out in the future, where you'll have that the ability and access to you know communicate with different folks and facilitate an exchange and change the rates and all the, all the rest of that. But you are spot on in the sense that you need to get into the system now, right? Because these products are going to surface on the other side, and there are people in a you know conference room staring at a whiteboard looking at the products, right? Like, okay, so what do we have to play with? How do we how do we go spend our money and time and resources to build things based on the products that are available to us? And so that's that is absolutely kind of the the time component here. You gotta get in now for them to plan around that. Yeah. So unlike the conditioning we've heard in the past of build it and they will come and everyone's like, no, that won't happen. What what should probably be stated now is just build a really damn good product because if yep. you build a good product and you connect these things it's actually going to benefit you because to your point they're all staring at the whiteboard figuring out which one to go with you got a cool unique product they're going to probably pick that one that's exactly it go out there and build or make the product the world needs and there will now be a whole team of people out there trying to sell that product for you Wow, that's awesome. I think, um, all right, I'm thinking about it. Everybody, you got a quick call to action. Get after it. Brandon, we're going to keep watching. Really appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, Rich, there's another great show. And when you add it all together with the other shows, you won't miss any strategies or new tactics on how to grow your online business. So to make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Rich, what player do you like? Uh, probably Stitcher. All right. How about you? I'm, I'm an Apple podcast guy. I'm an Apple guy on that. Yeah. And we're growing right now. A listener asked us to add Google Play as a platform. So we just added that a couple of weeks ago. We have Spotify, SoundCloud. Nice. We're everywhere. So subscribe on your favorite platform and don't forget to rate and review us. So we know what you think. Yeah. Rate how we're doing. Review on what we have done. Tell us topics you'd like us to cover. Uh, Tell us if you think we're great and you uh, are going to take over the world. Subscribe, rate, and review. It's the only way we'll know and it keeps the shows coming. Thanks, everybody.